Hello Clash fans, Triple Damage coming at you today with the greatest wall breaker tutorial that I have ever made. What we're going to do is run through five facts slash tips about wall breakers and then also a brief explanation of why people do something that confuses a lot of players when they see bases that have like no corner wall pieces and we'll talk through what that looks like. Uh, but we'll start with five tips on exactly how to use and maximize your value that you gain from wall breakers. So the first thing that we're going to wind up doing is we're going to take a look at something that most people tend to think of the way that wall breakers attack is they go for wall pieces that target, they think compartments that are covered or compartments that are enclosed. When in reality, the wall breakers actually are, uh, what I'm doing here is I'm trying just to destroy exactly that one archer tower and these defenses are doing an outstanding job of protecting it. Um, because what I want to actually show you here is uh, wall breakers actually target the closest building that is protected by walls. They don't target compartments that are protected by walls. So if we were to drop a, a wall breaker over here by this fiery statue, you'd figure naturally, everybody would figure naturally the wall breaker is going to go for one of these wall pieces here because that compartment is completely enclosed and there's an expo inside of it. When in reality, the Grand Warden statue is actually closer to this fiery statue than the expo is. And so it will target a wall piece that is protecting the Grand Warden statue instead of this expo. And so we'll go one, two, three. We're going to half time speed. So we're going to take a look right here. We drop that wall breaker. You saw the reticle appear on this. And the wall breaker is headed over toward the Grand Warden. But of course, the Grand Warden statue is a pro at destroying wall breakers. So it completely snuffs that wall breaker, uh, while helping the expo take it down. Now what we do now is we throw a few wall, uh, more hog riders in there to take out that Grand Warden. And now the wall breaker is actually going to do a little bit more like what you would have expected, which is target this wall piece right here. Wait for the reticle. Here it comes. That wall breaker is going to go right toward that wall piece that we naturally would have expected because it's now targeting the expo, which is closer than the cannon or this elixir storage. And so it wants to get into this compartment. A lot of people don't necessarily understand that. So tip number one, wall breakers target buildings that are protected or enclosed by walls. They are not targeting for compartments themselves. Number two, wall breakers actually, oh, we'll show you the truth. Wall breakers deal attack damage or, you know, a splash damage and they deal death damage. So for level eight wall breaker, they deal 75 damage as their attack. They deal 42 damage when they blow up. Now, if you happen to be destroying a wall or blowing up a wall, it'll deal 40 times that amount. So 75 times 40 deals 3000 damage to walls. Plus it'll deal 42 damage 40 times another 1680 damage when it explodes so between the actual attack damage of the bomb 3000 and the death damage from the wall breaker another 1680 it's going to deal a total of 4680 points of damage to a wall piece now this here was just a raid that i was making and i happened to you see the reticle appear here great this wall breaker ran over a giant bomb so i always do test giant bombs which we're going to do as our next next tip rule uh, that wall breaker is going to actually die from this giant bomb so he's setting his he's trying to toss that barrel but the bomb actually kills him before the barrel hits the ground, so it basically doesn't count as having made the attack, and you see 1,680 points of damage come off of those walls because it only took the 42 death damage multiplied by 40, which is 1,680. And it's not until the second wall breaker comes in that you can see... I'm going to try and time this. Uh, uh, explosion number one is when the bomb hits and destroys and deals its, its 75 points of damage, which is 3,000 when multiplied by 40, plus the other 1,680 getting us down to where we are here. Uh, hopefully I cut that up and splice it and the, the audio works just fine. And then we're ready to move on to the next tip. Uh, but so death damage is a thing. Now, what I want to show you is uh, an example here against a Town Hall 2. We have an army camp here that has 200, a level 1 army camp, has 250 hit points, and a level 1 uh, clan castle that has 1,000 hit points. Now, these wall breakers, without targeting walls, are only going to deal the 75 attack damage and the 42 death damage, so 117 points of damage, which means three wall breakers are going to be needed to destroy this army camp. So we bring in, there's one, and let me see if we can get, so there you go, see the wall, the the uh, the bomb that he has? As soon as it dwindles to nothing, it deals its first bit of damage, which is that 75 damage from the explosion, but then he dies, and you can actually see the little elixir coming off of there, 
As he explodes, it deals the rest of its 42 points of damage. Then the wall breaker number two deals his 117, and the final wall breaker will destroy it. Now, because this has a thousand hit points, and the wall breakers deal 117 between the attack damage and the death damage, it's going to take nine wall breakers. So we just go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and by the time they're all done, poof, that clan castle has been destroyed. Now, obviously, they that's nine wall breakers. Against a regular wall, they'd be dealing 4,680 points of damage nine times, which, of course, would take out any wall in the game. But against the regular buildings, it doesn't deal that 40 times the damage. So tip number three. Always, 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 always send a test wall breaker. Uh, I know you guys have seen clan maids do something like this before, where they just jump in a whole bunch of wall breakers. A couple of them get hit by a spring trap, some get hit by some buildings, and just like that, you do not have any penetration into that compartment because all of your wall breakers died. So the strong recommendation is always to use, and this helps against checking for spring traps it helps for checking against giant bombs uh, it can also help protect sometimes against a, an initial blast from a mortar or a wizard tower but that's going to be more tanking troops which again is tip number four that we're going to talk about in just a moment so here we sent one wall breaker in who triggers that spring trap and then the other three wall breakers behind and they managed to make it into and destroy that wall to give us access into the base so always, always, always send a test wall breaker to help you get into the base. Uh, the next tip, number four, have a tanking troop. The last thing you want to do is send your wall breaker by itself up against whether it's an archer tower, an expo, an inferno tower that's on single target mode, a wizard tower, a cannon. You send a wall breaker by itself and it just got snuffed before it managed to deal its attack damage, only dealt the death damage, so it dealt 1,680 points of damage. We missed the other 3,000 points of damage that that wall breaker was going to deal. Now here, what we did is we put a giant down. Giants work for this. Uh, golems work for this. Your heroes can work for this. Sometimes a hog rider can work for this, or even just a pair of barbarians. Something just to distract defenses long enough to let your wall breakers then come in to destroy the wall and give you ingress to the compartment. So that's tip number four. Number five, not everybody knows that wall breakers are affected by the rage spell. And if you do know this, then you might not necessarily know it intentionally, but it is a thing that you can actually capitalize on. A queen charge very often will wind up involving a queen, sometimes having to go against a compartment with a hero where you're probably going to use a rage spell anyway. But instead of in this case here, you see we did one and then two and then a third wall breaker to eventually get her into that compartment. If we had instead simply used a rage spell, which in that last attack, she was going to wind up needing the rage spell to help take out the barbarian king anyway, because he deals a lot of damage. Here we get that uh, once that cannon is engaged on the archer queen, we go ahead and send in a single wall breaker which under rage deals enough damage to destroy that wall by itself. And then, of course, while still under rage, the Archer Queen steps up, handles the Barbarian King, and then moves inside the base. Now, the last thing I want to talk through very briefly is the these base layouts that people started seeing pop up about, you know, we'll say like late 2019. Um, let me, I have a replay in here somewhere. Uh, late 2019 that people started doing this where the walls started not being completely connected. You saw these gaps in the wall pieces. Now, this was primarily to combat a queen charge where even when appropriately funneled here, like if you were to destroy these buildings and you were to destroy some buildings over here, you could wall break these pieces and get your queen to step up inside of these compartments or even to filter your funnel your king into those compartments. But now, because these buildings here are not considered protected by walls we put a giant in here and we send the wall breaker and you see it's heading off this direction to go try and free open that air defense because from right around these bushes and you place a wall breaker this archer tower and this elixir storage do not consider their the wall breakers do not consider them to be protected by walls or covered by walls so they go running off someplace else to try and get the wall piece broken open by the air defense which if you were to place a wall breaker right over here by the spell factory, it would not consider the air defense to be covered because you could easily get inside this compartment and walk over to destroy it, and rather that wall breaker would now run down toward this archer tower, which is actually something that you can see over here. What we do is we put a wall, uh, a giant over here, and you see the, the reticle appeared right here on this wall piece for this wall breaker. The wall breaker does not view this elixir storage nor this archer tower as covered, so it's trying to make its way over to this wall piece. You drop down a little lower, and you can see it's heading up toward this one. It's very 
difficult sometimes for these weird layouts of walls to predict exactly where the wall breakers are going to charge because you see that reticle appeared right here when dropping a wall breaker down here and you might have expected it to possibly target one of these pieces and then we move up here a little bit and you drop a wall breaker between the barracks and the gold mine it starts going after this cannon now over here this is another reason why you know we're just talking wall layout in general people will build out a single defensive structure like this with some wall pieces because if the wall breaker does target this corner wall piece Piece, the splash damage will not reach all the way over to here so you need at least two rounds of wall breakers to get into this compartment from this direction because it's going to start by trying to destroy this area and then it would move to one of these pieces but that's even assuming it doesn't skip that all together because of this being open so if you put wall breakers up here like you can see these guys are they're headed down here to get to this cannon because of that opening in the wall and because this is such a pain in the butt, you try and walk a queen or a king to go inside this compartment. The queen is just going to stand on the outside here shooting this stuff and keep running. The barbarian king is going to say, oh yeah, I'm going to go to this barracks and then here and then here and then here. And even from here, the barbarian king is probably just going to keep running around different portions of the base. Now, the last part that I want to show you is up here. If you were to deploy wall breakers up at the top here, this layout is kind of awkward because if you were to put a wall breaker near this cannon, it doesn't view the air defense as protected by a wall. But then it doesn't view the crossbow, expo, as protected by a wall, nor the bomb tower, nor this archer tower, and because of the length of these walls, nor the wizard tower. If you deploy a wall breaker up here, you're actually going to see it head down this direction to try to stop or try to blow open these wall pieces by the air sweeper, which you see right here as that wall breaker is coming in oh, it already died uh we'll put the giant in there on the cannon and then there we go reticle appears on there these wall breakers are going to try to run all the way across here to free open this area now when you go up on this top side here if i wind up placing the exact same thing and i put my wall breakers up on the top they don't view these buildings as protected by walls nor do they view these buildings so if you deploy wall breakers up on this side by the wizard tower and the archer tower see this reticle they're trying to get to this expo all the way down here targeting that wall piece and that's what these weird openings in the walls will wind up doing now it's great for preventing queen charge uh, specifically but it's also going to be great, though, for like a golem avalanche where you're just like spamming a bunch of golems and wizards and witches in there. So it's great for protecting against some types of attacks, but not against others. Uh, I hope you are substantially more educated about wall breakers from having stayed all the way through the end of this video. I really appreciate it for those of you that have hung around. Again, please make sure to share this with your clan mates, uh, subscribe to the channel, like the video, comment down below, check out my content on TikTok, check out Reddit. The subreddit for Clash of Clans is wonderful. There's a lot of great resources there along with some wonderful moderators. I trample damage saying thanks so much for watching. You guys have a good one.